Hey Legion. Okay. Hey Evan. Hello there. <laughs> All right. As always, was this the banner yeah. expected? Obviously, I expected yeah. I was expecting Fire Emblem Four, as I, I was said in chat. Genealogy or Three Houses. I, I was no. just hoping for a Pamela or Arion GHB. And you were going ah FP seven, but uh. No, FP seven was the only one I could say maybe, but FP four because of Thracia, the two always go together, and it seems mm -hmm. like keeping up that trend. All right. Now, as for the heroes. Wow. Uh, mm. uh -huh. Is... I did... hmm? Teen, I kind of expected. Arthur, after the um, supposed DM leak of um, Grand Vulture, was very realistic. And then for GHPs, I was just bashing them all off, so I wasn't sure what to expect. But generally, this banner somewhat anticipated. Oh. Huh. Because the reason why I brought that up is. Did you guys notice? All of a sudden, we have five new mages in two yeah. banners. That's a lot. Like, and they're all five star locks, and I'm I'm highly doubtful that they're not going to be at least good. Five new mages, six in two banners. Yeah, because we also have the GHB. Who's a mage, by the way? Spoiler alert. Oh, the GHB is already out. Well, no, uh, uh, the name for them because it's the notification. Yeah. Oh, yeah. okay. Who is it? The Hilda, Hilda. <laughs> but specifically the Fire Emblem 4 Hilda. Hey, so I never played Genealogy, so I wouldn't know. So now you're gonna get she's, that confused. Uh, she's basically a member of a member of Ishtar's family, and she's like notoriously a huge bitch. Like she's like really cruel she and terrible. Evil. Yeah, she's she should be a red mage, but if we're lucky, she won't be infantry. Wow, that that sounds like Hilda from Three Houses to me. But Hild Hilda's just like from Three Houses, is just like lazy. But this Hilda is like actively Hild cool. Like Hilda in Three Houses is close to the tail tube. What are you talking about? Yeah, Hilda in Three so. Three Houses is actively Sonya cruel. From Blazing Blade. <laughs> yeah, she's kind of like Sonya in Blazing Blade. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, yeah, basically. Um, she is basically Sonya in Blazing Blade to Tail Two as Nino. Um. Here, I can give you an image of Hilda that you can... Oh, use. yeah, sure. Let's see it. And here you go. I'm curious to see what her art upgrade will look like, because, of course, she hasn't gotten, like, much art at all since that one portrait in FE4. And the, um, TCG art. Well, yeah, bes I meant besides that. Yeah. yeah. Because all right, guys. Character... You ready to see Hilda? Here's Hilda, yeah! That's yeah, Hilda! There, there, yeah! There, 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 there's Hilda. There, there she is, yeah! This is what we're getting. Yeah, that's what oh, we're getting. Man, she's I can't cruel, wait. she's evil, yeah. Oh, she doesn't look much like Ishtar despite being related to her, huh? Yeah, oh. man, no, I think, really upgraded their art I style. Think, uh, no, I think, they, I think they dyed her hair, that's what happened. Yeah, exactly. Anyways, that's we're getting Hilda. Oh. They, they changed their weapon type, dyed her hair, but it's the same character at heart. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's the same character. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so who's this? <laughs> oh, this is also Hilda. I see, I see. <laughs> All right, well. Yeah. well. She's a queen class in FE4, so that might be armored. Don't don't expect it. Whoa. Don't. Well, it'd be awesome to get more armored mages, but yeah, I don't expect it. It will be the only free armored mage, so don't expect that. <laughs> yeah, that'd be and great. And even if she is, but, uh... don't expect to have a PRF weapon. No, oh, because she comes with Bolganon in her yeah, game. Awesome. So, yeah. She's probably going to be slow. Probably going to be more like um, Sonya, stat line wise. She could be, but her actual oh. stat line isn't that slow. Wait, that's mean. If it is like Sonya's stat line, she's just about to get her GHP rerun, which is a lot of people who wanted to plus 10 her would plus 10 her. I mean, on the other hand, at least it's blue versus red. But oh, it already told you she's red. Yeah. Well, it's just well, what she should be. She's a fire mage. Who, who just oh, woed? God damn it. Anyways. Yeah, yeah she's okay. A fire mage, so. Not be I mean, interesting I guess to see. We'll see, but yeah. I don't know. I can't see myself building her unless she's armored, but I'm interested to see what she brings to the table because we I just got Salem. I still have to make a plus 10 um, Sonya, so. 
Of course you do. <laughs> <laughs> of course I do. All right, chat. But yeah, let's go back to the banner. Anyways, this new heroes banner. Well, um, I was guessing genealogy a couple of banners back, but I forgot about going back to it. Anyways, as somebody who's never played genealogy, this was pretty much a mindfuck because I saw male Ira and young Ishtar. <laughs> yeah, it's all free. They literally just went full Frigga and Skahak. Oh, man. So real quick, Tyne is quite impressive. Colors yeah. mages have been really getting a boost this year. They're really trying to saturate that pool finally. Sure. And yet she they still the decide that Nime should be the only person. fridge. One. Oh. Queen of the Meh. Shut uh, up. Oh, oh, yeah. oh, oh. So immediately, I already see this is a really good mage. That guaranteed cooldown drop turns one it's to like three. Kanas, except yeah, it's th actually better because she can get it uh on any turn as long as her HP is below hundred yeah. percent. Also she's like yeah. a Rinka condition. Oh, she has slang. Let's not discount that. Ugh. Yeah, uh, it actually I, blows my mind how good this is because it's guaranteed. One through three. The only way this doesn't work is if you th turns one through three, you refuse to fight anything at all. That's the only time when her tome falls flat. Yeah, or fight anything at all and not have any form of self-damage or receive damage, which you have Fury and for. Fury I hope good, you do. Yeah. Yeah, her father is actually power crept. It's directly from Asbol. Asbel <laughs> yeah, that's right, because Asbol is Fury 4, no follow-up. But no... And then he has Speed Res O. Yeah, Speed Res O, that's right. <laughs> Which, by the way, demoted, I believe, the next banner. Yep, Dior awesome. buff. But <laughs> that blue feud plus no follow-up combo, my immediate thought is, man, team does not like Hector. <laughs> All right, so that's another thing against him. I wanted to point out, because everybody... Um, I kind of like we're, was talking about recognizing what blue feud was really going to be targeting. Is this actually going to be that big of a difference maker? Not with Hardy. I think it'll be the most common feud skill personally, but yeah. And inherited, which they don't, nobody ever inherits them in the first place. So the problem like going blue feud is, I'll be honest, I've fought like two Three, three hectares in two defense seasons now. I fight them almost every match in Summoner Duels, conversely, though. Mm -hmm. I see only as well as Ascended Dune. Ether Raid's defense, yeah, Fjorm, and, uh, and Ascended Dune seem to be very Wait, common. And, yeah, for some reason, I don't I don't see a lot of vectors, which I'm surprised by in Ether Raid's defense. He takes but... a lot of investment to get going, whereas mm -hmm. Dune, Fjorm, they are basically out of the box perfect, so you don't really have to try. But that said, there is nothing more stifling to face than Vector, if you actually do have to do it. So and, the, the, hmm? the point I was trying to get across was I'm not even sure how often you're going to fight um, Vectors. Like, I expect it to happen, obviously. In Summoner Duels, almost always. Anywhere else, it's, uh, I, I would even say it's almost shape, always yeah. in summer duels. But yeah, I'm I'm just saying to commit hard like that. Uh, the thing is, like, I mean, it works. It will work right now in the current meta. But I'm not. Well, doubting vectors. Yeah, doubting vector is also kind of scary. even <laughs> except even out. in like AR defense, for example, if you just have blue feed on your fence, it obviously you'll probably not see as many brave hectors while you're using it because. It's most They'll likely just switch off. probably not using it. Yeah. Just off, but that's like a good part of it. It's like keeping yeah. them at bay. And to be fair, in Ether Raid's defense, there's not a lot of C slots. Like menaces are okay. Especially but... for range Okay, cavalry. I guess that's right. Yeah. Yeah. Range calves it's... don't really care. No. It's... And range calves in particular can't use anything of interest, so you might as well use feuds. <laughs> Alright, fair enough. Maybe for from that reason, but. I'll be honest, it feels bad because you're giving me a Fury 4 X Null follow-up. I guess yeah. you can still get Fury 4 X Blue Feud, it's but it's... Uh, yeah. It, it wouldn't Lily, be amazing. Lily, thank you for the raid. But... Hey, what's up? Mm. You, it wouldn't be that bad of an inherit, but you really have to be hard set. That unit's trying to counter this kind of, like, archetype. Which yep. isn't technically a bad thing. Although, on the other hand, you could just use team. <laughs> because... Let's be honest here. Team's good. Yeah, so that's the other thing. Um, the other thing was I was thinking like, hey, Blue Feud's great on her all, but if you give her times pulse, that really is deadly. Instant Draconic yeah. Aura, three cooldown specials would 
be pretty instant devastating. Luna. Instant Luna. Instant Luna. So... Mm -hmm. like, instant Luna yeah. that cuts through damage reduction. That's like, um, that's kind of like Flavia's strategy, except she's Things are going well, so Lily. Thank you so much. Make better use of it on player phase. Also, it's instant. <laughs> yeah. You don't have to do anything. Yeah. It's literally just taking young Innes' concept and just tuning it up to a five stars capabilities of having instant higher cooldown specials while also being a mage instead of an archer. Well, she's actually, I'm, I'm looking at her more and I'm just uh, continually amazed by just how really, really good she is. Yeah. Yeah. No, she's fantastic. This, I, I, I and ironically, granted mage infantries aren't in the best place in the meta right now. Just because the mobility thing and whatnot. Well, mobility wise, but yeah. But her actual combat is. Phenomenal. In combat, there's very. <laughs> I think she's one of the best mages, period. <laughs> I agree. All right. But yeah, very e easy here to build. Actually, a pretty concise, pretty good kit. And the tome is magnificent. Um, very well set up, too. And again, going back into what the meta has been heading towards for a while now, the reduced damage by X percentage thing. A lot of heroes nowadays are. It feels like every banner is getting somebody who doesn't care about it. Yeah, they're trying to pull back on regular damage Time reduction in favor of Party Aegis, even though Nana already shows here. they plan to do that somewhat back. To power creep pass bell. That's an interesting way of looking at it, Sigma Sensei. <laughs> I guess that is technically correct. I mean, also Asbel and Teen both have slang tomes. It's just that Teen gets tech speed 6 and everything, whereas Asbel gets all plus 5. All yeah. right. better. Anyways, this character, I'll be interested. I definitely see her value and her worth, but this might probably be a character that most people just pick up like a copy of or something. Yeah. Also, a one -off could be still really it's a one-off hero, yeah. Yep. Oh, 100%. But I think this is definitely one of the best mages in the game to invest in. If you oh, so. her animation reminds me of um, female Morgan's tome and the and the Summer's reminds me tome. of Tale Tews. Uh, oh, is it actually the same as um, Tomothoron? Um, Tomothoron is three bolts surrounding that sphere, but otherwise it's the same, yes. This is one mm. of the best looking animations in the game, too. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's very clean. Cool. That's actually really layered. There's like three, four different animations going on once. Yeah, that one's actually a really cool, pretty seamless tome, I can't lie. All right, well, Arthur. So here's the thing. I Arthur. think... Now we've got Arthur. our third Arthur in the game. All right, all right, whatever. It's, I, I hate the name Arthur now. All right, with that said, this guy, Grand Vulture, he feels really similar to, you know what? He feels similar to Nime, except one has speed, one doesn't have speed, and one's gonna be, one's, it's kind of weird, but they've been releasing like this kind of archetype characters. Different should only buy like their speed, I guess, or at the allocation of speed, that's. Vulture Menace, yeah. Yeah. They basically done that twice, and then Salem decided not to have Madison get sabotage because you know, demote. Uh, Which they released three back-to-back -back Vulture tomes, by the way. Yeah, I, that's what I noticed too. It's, it's also two back-to-back -back yep. ideals. Because didn't wait, what is Gauls's? What's Gauls's estate slot again? Search Sparrow. Search Sparrow. Okay, but still getting some Gauls's vibes as well. <laughs> It's close though, because Hugh had uh, attack speed or speed defense ideal. Oh, yeah, right. Hugh had ideal. That's what it was. Mm -hmm. And then all right, was, yeah. So fodder. Uh, nice to have another ideal for fodder because it was I believe it was just Louise or something like that. Yeah, it was mm -hmm. just Louise, and you can't really get anything out of it because Rainbow Rally, whereas you can actually yeah. take Menace. And who's gonna fodder legendary female bio? Arthur should have been cavalry, as that was his whole thing in genealogy. He doesn't come. Ah, uh, ah. Uh, I'll the be honest. Thing. If they, if they made him a cav, I'd be more interested. He promotes yeah. to a cav. He promotes he to a cav, but he one. doesn't start. That's, as that'd be like saying that um that Nazel should be a cav because technically he promotes to one. So that'd be like saying a lot of the units in genealogy should be calves. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Lacassus should be a cav. Le base leaf should be a cav. Yeah, yeah but <laughs> now Arthur is fine as an imp. It's what he comes as. Um, well, I I think his usage case is probably going to end up pretty low. Unfortunately, well, that, that does make his general. usage low. It's more faithful, but it also it cripples him a bit. It wouldn't really be any more useful as a cav though, because Ninjoran is just objectively better at anything. That okay, you can find okay, it. that's true. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I guess. 
In fact, in some ways, it's almost worse. <laughs> well, anyways, he's in the game. It's a pretty concise kit. Vulture and just speed res menace. Unfortunately, it's not the best possible menace because he doesn't get the attack portion. That makes ground vulture extremely deadly. Now that we have male era, yeah, but on the other hand, he does actually ASDR. get to swing his speed step pretty hard because they're dropping speed, raising speed, ideal. Uh, uh, Smither arrow would be realistic. I'll, I'll honestly, that's something because the new hero um, idea, I think it's going to go on for a very long time, chat. So if you don't see a hero that you think is deserving of being ascended, I wouldn't call it out as. When we make it to next year, what are they going to do? Obviously, yeah. they're going to put a new hero into that slot. So, it's not over. Yeah, it could still they'll happen. Have they'll have to yeah. keep us in. There's no choice. So, yeah, that's a possible option in the future. Anyways, this guy's an S-tier fodder hero. He take the ideal four, speed res menace. Well, here's the thing. You can't take it now, but I expect it to be relatively within, like, next six months that we get to the demos to make this happen. For all we know, Helga could have uh, threatened speed res. <laughs> Oh, I, you're, I, wow. Oh, that's not it. Yeah, you're you're not wrong. I mean, this is implying she's fast-ish, but we'll see. Uh, yeah, but it, I mean, it's it's not that likely, but it's technically possible. Yeah, one way or another, it's going to happen soon. I mean, we've had some of these within like a month. We had uh, Alfric happen with Zeke, for example. Yeah. Which, uh, that ended up taking, what, a few months, right? It was a few months. Three so. months, four months, yeah. Yeah. Basically, patience is a virtue, but at least when that happens, we already have the ideal fodder, and you don't have to five-star a Muriel for it in that hypothetical. Yeah. Okay. All right. Which, well, actually, you can just take threaten speed, attack speed ideal three from Muriel, yeah, that's and true. then take menace ideal that way. You don't need threaten speed. Threaten, yeah, you can get threaten speed uh, pretty easily. Yeah. So you just have to five star Muriel, which is a little more inconvenient, but not a big deal. Okay. <laughs> All right. Well, this is another hero that I view as pre pre predominantly fodder. It's not like the green yep. mage space is that crowded. It's basically, no. I mean, when it comes to four stars, it's basically just Orochi and uh, his brother, Luthier. yeah, Luthier. Which, now that I think about it. If you when that threaten does come out, you can take all three and literally just make somebody else into ish into um Arthur. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's second. true actually. Because you can get be Muriel pretty... and then yeah, Luthier could Luthier. take all this and be pretty good. Yeah, yeah, that's actually the good pointer. And then some memers will try to make it all work on Orochi. Uh, you know it. I yeah. I I'm not I've seen Sony speed Orochis, but I don't understand. <laughs> she like caps out at right, fifty right. speed and everyone's like that's a lot it of worked. speed. It <laughs> and I've seen Tempest a certain player. person on our Discord server who tried to make, uh, who ascended Orochi's HP after giving her her res boon. God, I wish I didn't hear that. Yeah, hey. I know. It made me very sad. They, I think they changed it recently, but still. Good. <laughs> All right. This is actually secretly the most exciting hero from this banner uh, mm -hmm. for a lot of people. Because I'll be yeah, honest, I don't think a lot. by you, Evan. Mm hmm. Evan Lewis. Evan's first voice acting gig. He's just getting into it, you see. Next uh, month's yes, gonna yes. be Colin Gunter too. Yeah, we dox his last name for this one. Yep. Honestly, it wouldn't surprise me if his last name was Lewis. All right. Well, there's not much information <laughs> on him out there anyway, so. So. Mm -hmm. Just like there's no information on you, except that you're bad. How about you two just kiss already? Okay, so Skahawk <laughs> looks exactly Skahawk. like what I would ima imagine uh, male Ira would look like. It cracks me yeah. up. He his clothing just looks so awkward on him. Honestly, I'm so used to seeing like this kind of look on girls. To see it on a guy after all this time just feels so weird. He just reminds me a lot of Larcy. And I mean, of course, Ira too. Well, but, yes. But he's like being Larcy's twin, he's like very, very similar Are to they her. Drawn by the same artist? Uh they are not, no. No, wait, no, no, no. It's Asani to Asatani yeah. Tomoyo. But it still yeah. manages to capture the face pretty closely. Yeah, mm -hmm. it looks so identical. Anyways, um, familial bonds aside, the more important thing about him is that or he's a normal huge. hero. Yeah, uh, he's a normal hero. Yeah, he's it, as in a demote. Demoted normal hero. Um, okay, so people brought this up immediately. Galzus, you gotta feel bad for him, don't you? Poor guy. It, yeah. Most mm -hmm. likely, Skyhawks will be very close. 
Not going to be identical. I don't think that much, but close enough. I think, yeah. well... It's probably going to be a lot, a lot, quite a bit, like, a few points slower. Less attack yeah, gonna and be, less speed. By, he's, I he think might have... More so attack. Huh? Uh, I don't... Well, I'm, let's see. What's his HP Wait. in this in this here? Uh, what do you think? Like oh, that's a little hot. That's a that's, little high. That's a little high. That's like Yen Fei level. Yeah, so he's definitely oh, yeah, going to have less attack and speed. Um, I how think... is Skahawk in genealogy? Really uh, relative to Larce. Yeah, well, he's, he's, as far as I know, he's not too different from uh, Larce. I mean, yeah, he's I basically guess I check. pretty similar. Just, I think, yeah. more defense. So, he might be, like, a more, like, min-maxed Larce, like Scion Larce, in defenses, but then less attack and speed going into his HP and defense. Maybe. He does seem to be defense heavy based on his kit, so. Yeah, he might be closer than to Shannon, actually. High attack. Oh, that's good a speed. Yeah, that's a good pointer. Or oh, evil. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that's, that's no, a good pointer. He'd, he'd oh, no, have that. an attack stat. He'd have an attack stat. Come on. Don't do that to him. <laughs> Ival was dead on arrival. Damn, Come that on. run. Poor I yeah. Uh -huh. Poor Ival. Poor Ival. Okay, um, more importantly, at minimum, attack defense yeah. ideal, accessible. Spirit of Sword, accessible. Those two things. Do you That's remember huge. how vaunted Spirit Sword was once upon a time? I remember that. Like Bridal of Boro was, was quite uh, valued. Do you want uh, yeah. an inheritable uh, sword? Tie. Oh yeah, well, pause tie. But if you wanted a sword on a unit that wasn't like three star, four star, which there weren't many good ones, it was a Boro spirited sword for the longest time. Yeah. And then we just, and then Unbound Blade. Those are the only two options. Yeah. So it's nice to see it's finally being very accessible. And this hero, depending on the stats, could be very, very useful for a lot of people. Now, I don't think, I'm prob I'm, I'm dead set on this because I've never been lucky with these heroes, um, mm -hmm. these demoted heroes. I mean, the other day we talked about Benny. I still have not pulled one Benny. It's been how I mean, many years? Or uh, two uh, years? <laughs> it's been, no, it's been not even a little been a year. under a year. It's been, been, like, okay. it's, it's been like eight months. Eight months. I think. Yeah. Really? It's only been eight months. Oh, whatever. It came, I, out, yeah. it came, it out, came out in July. Out of, uh, July? Yeah. Okay. Well, at the rate I'm going, it'll be infinite amount of time before I get him to plus ten. I mean, so. Conversely, I've already plus. I could already plus ten Benny. Like, Can't I've relate. been able to do that for a while. So it is just luck. Like, you might get that unit plus ten easy, or you might never do it. Yeah. So it's there's a lot of luck to it, and the thing about Yanfei, not just he's guaranteed, but his sword is uh, is a perf. So all these things are in his favor. So even if Skahawk doesn't challenge Yanfei to that level, it's still acceptable because of all the fodder. So ultimately, this is a really good hero for the game, and for a mm -hmm. lot of people, it might be even more than that. It might be yeah. more than fodder. It might be a hero they commit to. So it's nice. It yeah, I'm I'm absolutely happy. I it's weird that Skahawk comes into the game without Regnal Astra, or Imperial Astra, but. That's the fate of a You know what? He's they could have, though. They could have. They very much could have. They could have. I mean, it been just look like at been a little too stacked for a random demote to have. I know, I know, I know. But, like, they did it for Young Marth. I get he's a special hero. Even if he is a demote, yeah. he's a special hero. But, like, it, was it feels... One. But... Yeah. This feels weird. It feels he kind of yeah. lacked, like, lacked I mean, something like that. At least... First of all, great kit. Otherwise, and second, Vital Astra does exist if you want it. So, no, he's fantastic though. Already, I don't even need to see the stats. But if he does actually hold up, if not exceed Yenfei's stat lines in some way, then he might at least have some form of justification for people, especially a who do not want to spend the Grails on Yenfei, or b don't want to deal with a melee lock. I mean. A, DC unit and want to focus on melee stuff with like Spirited Sword or Unbound Blade. I agree. All so, right. I'm actually really happy with this, even if it feels a little weird. Yeah. But yeah. You just kill Galsus for him. <laughs> yeah. You, you could literally just take Galsus' kit, throw it on him. Uh, basically, all of it, actually. And throw it on Skahawk and be done. Um, Attack Death Ideal, a little weird right now because. Is it just on Fallen Natal Guard? No, uh, Legendary Male Bialis 2, and I think oh, yeah. somebody I, else I, maybe, but... 
Okay, male Byleth at least. Oh, I think cool. Prime too, maybe. Oh yeah, Prime has it. Okay, there's at least a couple of decent candidates for tech def ideal pathing. <laughs> because Fallen right. Needle Guard, you're gonna take Armored Stride with that, really? <laughs> yeah, so that's that's the other thing that really got me. I think like that's a hero you would just use. It's not meant yeah. to be foddered. No. So at least there's a couple of candidates that aren't Edelgard. <laughs> All right. But our new Ascend hero, this is the big one. The new Ascend hero. I. Oh, Man, I can't believe it's Ishtar. I mean, I was, it makes I was sense to it me. Would be it makes sense. Luin if it were FE4, but then again, oh. Ishtar is very, very, very okay. popular. Yeah, popularity plus we're focusing on specifically Frigga. So I guess that makes sense. Yeah, I was but hoping just, they do this... some sort of Eldigan like legendary Sigurd where he's like a ghost sort of. Yeah. Well, I it feel kinda, like if they do that, it would be on a different banner that has, like, Dire Moid. Yeah, but it kind of goes to prove now that we can't expect Ascend Adults to just be, like, the character in the post-game. Because Ishtar is dead by the post-game, so this is just Ishtar oh my dressed, God. dressed up a little bit. You better. ruined Genealogy for me. I'm never going to play this game ever now Jesus. because of you. Yeah, How so dare you? Gonna, you oh no, it's about a game from 1994. Hey, it no. wasn't in English! You can't go with that excuse if it's not in English. Oh no. Well, not literally game. everyone plays the games in still translated Still probably stuff. around 2010, if not sooner. Oh no, well before that, not I believe. But, but, yeah. yeah. But anyway, I actually, no, it's... I actually feel bad playing a Fire Emblem games on, like, when they're pirated. I, actually, I don't. Yeah, I, mean, I don't I'm feel gonna, bad at all. I want to. I want to feel bad. But intelligence is. I, I, I don't care enough movie. to feel bad. Yeah, it's. No, it's, I, I actually. Release them, so. So Unless. here's the thing for, mm -hmm. for Path of Radiance, Radiant Dawn, games like that. Okay, yes. I wish I could get this. Shut the fuck up, Sigma. There's a chance anyway, for a genealogy well. remake. There was a lot of talk about that. Anyways, I'm just saying, when, when, when there is an option in English, but it's preposterously priced. Yeah. Then no, I I absolutely absolutely recommend people pirate the damn game because it just doesn't make sense. It's not no, our no. fault. It's no. not our fault. But if the game is literally not in our language, again, it's not necessarily our fault. But there's a lot of intricacies for some of the older Fire Emblem games that but, might be controversial to bring over nowadays to the West. What I would want to do is actually buy the Japanese copy, which is what I plan to do, and play in English ROM, and then eventually play the Japanese one. But wait, how much like is that? It's actually not that much. It's like 30 bucks, I think. Because for some reason, Famicom it, it, cartridges are so cheap. The hell? Really? That's... What? Yeah. How could it be that cheap? Um, let me double check huh. this. I checked this not too long ago, and it was definitely in my price range. So, let me double check. Geniality of the Holy War. Anyways, the point was, never feels right to, like, pirate games... Well, not all games. Some games it feels right, <laughs> but for uh, for Fire Emblem game because it's been so committed to the community and everything, it just feels wrong to me personally. Yeah, could, I know it's not for everybody, but you could buy the Super Famicom cartridge of Genealogy: of The Holy War for twenty five dollars. Damn. Okay, that that for makes sure. a lot more sense to me. Um, for those of you guys who were there and remembered it, I specifically played Fire Emblem Shadow Dragon, not on emulator. I played it on the Wii U like oh yeah right that's the thing yeah that, it's not something new with me i've always held this belief it always felt wrong with me so that's the reason why i did that even though it would have been much easier to run that game on the computer um it feels better to play it on actual hardware and actually I like agree. own the game and everything but no no this is a this is, this is a tangent it's not a, for everybody i get that um yeah uh, trust me, I 100% agree. I'm a retro collector for life. But when it comes to these ones, where they refuse to release them in English, I'm willing to cut my losses. Yeah. And just use uh, the ROM. You were talking about pirating Dread, weren't you? Because of emulators? No, I was talking about Dread running better on emulators, which didn't make any sense to me. It ran at 4K 60 frames. I mean, it, it doesn't It'd be make in sense. Japanese. With that being Japanese, Axelish, I can't read yeah. <laughs> no and trust me with a game like genealogy you kind of want to be able to read yeah yeah, I, yeah I, it's, it's not really much of a game if you can't read it i'll be honest like people some people say like it's all about the gameplay it's never been about the gameplay for me it's the gameplay helps deliver the story and helps make the story 
uh, accentuate the story for me. That's what it's always been for me. For some yeah. people who play through Fates and they're just like, it's just about the gameplay. Like, no. <laughs> well, no. okay, with Fates, I, well, it, with Fates, people will argue with Fates is more understandable. Because the story is a lot more insane and, and whatnot. But you, if you've ever seen me play well, Fates, I actually, I'm not skipping the text or anything. I'm going to read it. Like, I, well, I, no, Fates, uh, Fates, the thing about Fates compared to Genealogy is actually, the gameplay is actually like a big focus in terms of yeah, um, more so than the story for, yeah, for a yeah. lot of people. Right. And whereas genealogy is, its gameplay can actually feel kind of tedious, so the story helps make up for that for a lot yeah. of people. Okay, yeah. whatever the reason is, I'm, 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 my point is, not reading this story is not something I can ever comp uh, consider doing. No, well, not, it's not with Fire Emblem, especially because even if we ignore story, you have to actually be able to play the game. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So that wouldn't be so easy if you can't read the game. I'm not comparing the story. I was trying to make the point of that I can't skip the story, even if in a game of questionable story like Fates. But honestly, I enjoyed Fates because it looked like Corrin was a... Well, it looked like Corrin yeah, was you, insane. You just look at him like he's insane. It actually is pretty funny. Yeah, it's actually funny if you do that. All right, but while that's said, Ishtar. Anyways... Oh yeah, what's the point of this? Oh yeah, fuck Dex. He ruined the game. Okay, well. Anyways, with that all that said, this is a really good kit. Um, Life and Death for Law Speed Res Times Pulse. It's been a while since I've just seen an A, B, and C skill. I mean, Sunny Heroes always get like the really good A, B, and C skills, but it's, it feels like it's been a while since I've just seen something like, I agree with everything here. That makes so much sense, especially once it's you get to Tome. Simple. It's just super simple. <laughs> yep. Get now, I fully understand now why they didn't make a uh, Nime. Or it's not nine. Um, teen. Teen. Is it Tyne or t is it Teen or Tyne? Uh, yes. I actually have no idea. For sure. Yeah. Uh, the other day I was talking about this as well. I wish more characters in their games just said their names, like a I super mean, villain. I they literally couldn't. <laughs> well, yeah, this was in voice. But no, no, no. Even if, once she comes to the game, I highly doubt she's gonna be like, "I Teen will teach you how to do magic." You know, like. I will like hi my name is teen something like that nice to meet yeah. you which a lot of characters do it's just not everybody not everybody it gets really awkward. and not everybody cares when they do for example elamine yeah or d horba well actually or e dune i constantly hear e thune for some reason but yeah Heck, okay anyways um so going back to that i understand why there's no time spots on her because it just make her an ishar like Idea. Yeah, so simple. They don't like, they don't like well, overlapping fodder much. Give Ishtar phantom speed and uh, is always on no. <laughs> That's not how phantom speed works. <laughs> I'm you also not even it. sure. <laughs> you need to actually have more speed than your foe for phantom speed to be able to do speed plus 10. To... <laughs> it gives right. you, you need to not help, but it won't speed. guarantee that it activates. Be able to always get it. Yeah, it just means. That if if you would normally match them, yeah. congrats, you you get your 10 speed. But... Also, Blade Session is just better, but anyways. Yes. Uh, the other thing about this is just, it's practically guaranteed, I would say. Law Speed Res means they can't buffer speed. Life and Death 4 <laughs> is the highest attack speed value you can possibly uh, grab. The Tome yeah. already adds attack speed plus 6, and she's a Senate Hero, which means you would be a fool not to make her plus speed, which we can probably just uh, guess as being plus speed. What I'm trying I'm to say is... 44. Mm -hmm. Natural. Ferdinand yeah. Von Iger says his name all of the <laughs> Yes. More supervillains like Ferdinand. Which he doesn't say in this game. <laughs> oh, yeah. For You know what? That actually drives me nuts now that you mentioned that again. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's uh, a weird thing. Okay, fine. Nothing's guaranteed, but it's practically. Like, everything yeah. about this means you can grab as much speed as possible to make this work. So, yep. yes, it's not... Literally guaranteed, but it's as close as it gets when it comes to the, like, these criterias. Yeah, and it's Ishtar. You should be anticipating that outspeeding is just how Ishtar is going to function. Like, that's just a given. But, um, character-wise. That said, I find it hilarious. This is one of the shortest kits in a long time. Oh, yeah. Like... Every one of the skills is two lines at maximum, and the tome is only six. It's such an easy read compared to even other ascended units, which I find hilarious. <laughs> yep. 
anyways this tome is great she can quad now so this yep. goes back to like something I, I talked about a while ago i don't like it when they do this which is to yeah. say the senate heroes are just 100 percent upgrades on the initial hero there's no point i mean if you had to pick between it's the two heroes Base Ishtar's big thing besides availability is that she can run wind sweep and not have yep. to meet as much of a stringent speed check. Also, her B slot is free to run tempo anyways, since she doesn't need no follow up. Or uh, if, if you run, can... well, yeah, run... you wouldn't be able to run wind sweep, but yeah, yeah. Opportunity cost. That's also really expensive, but the yeah. entire point I was trying to make. Like, virtually all situations, the new Ascendant Dune should be better. Until the Dune base gets her refined, which is actually pretty soon, but base has already got it. Um, In highest base? No. There's no way we're getting a 45 space speed unit out of Ishtar. Because <laughs> if I remember correctly, my, my base my base Summer Frey was like 51 speed or something, and I just thought that was insane. Yeah, no, especially since Freya's have speed plus three natural. Not happening. All right. This is Char could have like 42 speed, though. Yeah, this is Char will probably be one of the fastest units of the game. Not as fast as Freya. Nobody's fast as Freya. All right. So, uh, yeah, really quickly, chat. This is going to be a pretty amazing hero. Uh, mm -hmm. And I forgot my original train of thoughts, but. Oh, wait, um, no, it was a comparison. Yeah. Yeah. They, they've done this already. Um. If they at least just change the color, I get it. You know, they they want to theme things. I get it, right? So blue tones are supposed to include thunder. I get it. Yeah. But you come on direct overlaps, and that's awfully painful. Yeah. I mean, uh, again, on the other hand, it is an Ascended versus a four-star special, who is also resplendent. But, yeah. This is one of those unfortunate cases where you literally can't escape basically the whole original unit because ishtar is never mounted or armored she's always an infantry she's always a thunder mage it's not like joshua where you can cheese the fact that yeah he can just have a dagger because he's a thief yeah you can make a done blue because dragons don't matter what color they are ishtar is kind of just screwed in the matter especially if they yeah. want to keep her holy weapon which is part of her identity so again, this is the argument of power creep in this game going too far when literally a hero you could have had during the first couple of years, loved, cared for all this time, and it just released something that's roughly 100% better. Yeah, that's the... It, it, that's it's, the it's better. It's not enough where I think you can literally just say, ditch your base Ishtar, get a plus one of this and you're better. Well, it's you can... Well, hmm? the other thing... Well, I don't think you can ever really say that. But I mean, you could say that there's more no so differentiation. For, um, it's no, not. We'll, we'll see. We'll see for sure once the stats come out. Yeah, because I, highly base doubt Ishtar it. Is, I think base Ishtar should still actually be faster, ironically, because she has speed plus 11 on her dome. But sure. that's about the biggest thing and the half no follow up on tome as opposed to on um, B if you choose to run it, which, by the way, Already gonna say no follow up might not be wanted on this Ishtar. You probably just keep lull because you don't need to quad. You can just be a brave to him if you want. All right, well, let's go over the pole pole. Wait, no, I want to hear your thoughts first before we go to the pole pole. I think this is one of the worst ascended heroes. Wow, I don't think she's that bad, but she's not exciting. Well, I mean, for, it's a, in the perspective of the Ascended Heroes we have now, who's better? I mean, who's worse? Yeah, I mean, I mean the only one I think that's, like, arguably worse is Legyarn. And even then, Legyarn can do a nasty no follow-up build and is an actual physical, like, sorry, a wind sweep or water sweep build and is a physical wall. Wait, you think Ascended Legyarn's the worst one? Worst. Wait, yeah. what? I Are you crazy? Especially I've just never been threatened by her at all. I've watched her smash the Bectors. I've watched her smash just about everything. She's kind of yeah, insane. I thought it happened I, to me. I think she's in, pretty insane. In fairness, I can't say I'm threatened by her all the time because nobody uses her correctly. Because Sir Rouse is not made for Aether Raid's defense. Well, and, yeah, you can't just no, use base kit and expect You can't use base kit. Do, okay. But yeah, I've seen very well deployed. 
Ishtar being Carlos, I she can kill Fjorm, she can kill Bectors, she can kill just about any far save tank. Ishtar is blue. She's blue. Like oh, thing. sorry. No, no. I'm, I'm talking about leg yarn. Sorry. Oh yeah, oh, leg yarn. Yeah, yeah, leg yarn has good coverage against anything, which is. I consider great. Edune and Marita probably the best two ascended heroes. But, I. Uh, I would Marita, say Edune is, 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 is best, followed by Fjorm, yeah. in my opinion. Fjorm? I don't know about that. I think Fjorm is like three or top three or four. Maybe top, the top three, top three. Actually, maybe, yeah, I'd say top maybe three. Maybe in like. I'm so three, confused yeah. by how people view Fjorm. Some people think she's crap, and some people think she's amazing. I think she's amazing. Well, I mean, I, I don't understand this gap. I, I do think, think she is good, but she does need. I think a lot she's of quite good, but yeah, she's. I, I wouldn't go so far as she, she's absolutely amazing, but she's still quite good. She's good enough where a lot of people, no matter what their skill level is, can make a lot of use out of her. So the null C in her, the healing in her. Makes her a really uh, interesting unit because those things are other um, other far saves don't really do. Yeah. Well, I guess she, Robin started coming onto that healing part. But oh you know yeah. I mean. but, well, yes, the healing part. But yeah, she brings a lot of good stuff to the table that most far saves can't. And even if other far saves can do the raw bulk better, Fiorm does the speed bulk in a way that most can't, which is a unique enough advantage to actually have value in specific cases that other units can't even try to be as valuable in. All right, well, will you pull a new Heroes Banner? Well, for me, honestly, I... right now, my goal is to plus 10 a Legendary Hero or get more um, Mythics, uh, Legendary or Mythic, or sorry, more Mythics right. for a Light Season. That's my right. goal right now, so. Yeah. I'd like to plus 10 a Legendary Claude at some point. For a pragmatic side, I can definitely understand skipping. Me personally, full disclosure, I'm plus tending Vector this next week. I'm at plus nine, and I will use as many orbs as I have to to get him to plus ten. After that, if I have any, maybe I'll try a little bit on this. But let's see it, if you're cursed. Plus nine curse is a real thing. It is a real thing. I hate it, but at least Vector gets one more four percent week because. Vector gets it two weeks in a row for some reason. So I better not get that curse with Saul. With those rates, good luck. Yeah. True. I've uh, I've theorized that Evan will plus ten Saul in like twenty twenty six, I believe. This is a funny option. Yes, I'm pulling for the real Skahawk. This is not the real ah. Skahawk. They gender bent her. All right, what banner is this? Looks weak like any other Book 6 banner, Kappa. All right, well, I'm not going to go for it. You guys can let me know your options, but let's see how you guys look at this. 32 responses. Straight up, 50% no. <laughs> yeah, I was kind of expected. I mean, at least this time they did choose some popular characters from Genealogy as far as what you could choose. Teen's pretty popular, Ishtar, obviously. Skahawk, but and Arthur is fairly and popular. Arthur is also like they tried their best too, but it is genealogy, it is mages. Yeah, I understand this. Just not the good grand hero battle options. Some people, uh, some people think this is funny. I'm, I'm sure. I mean, I know some people ironically the worst like him, one, but not the best one either. I would have chosen. A lot of people hate Hilda, but then there are the people who, who like her ironically, so. Alright, real quick. Is it me or people dissing the Fairy Effect on Ishtar haven't gone to the point where effectively doubling your damage for free not good enough? The the reality is, um, even with the Null Specials, so meaning a guaranteed special on that, there are so many heroes nowadays that can take the hit, actually. They can still take the hit. In which case, right. the quadding shouldn't happen, because they'll just die before they get to the second, shot, second two shots. Yep. It, the Brave Effect almost should be assumed to just be two consecutive hits that can't be avoided. More so than a quad. Either because of Wary, or because if you don't kill in those two shots, you're dead. Yeah, because the no reality is... The charge thing definitely does help her survivability, but yes. it's not super reliable. Yeah. At least she can't hypothetically charge some, like, poor cooldown breath specials, for example. But, on the other hand, she does, because of her Brave Effect... For example, proc fall and needle guards ball and fire all the same because she hits twice. Sorry. Not all servants are gender bent frenzy, but most of them are. We both know who they are. All right, but real, yeah, 
that's the thing. The quadding is really cool, but Ishtar is likely to have low defense, which means anything that she doesn't kill will kill her. Quadding would be better if it's like uninterrupted. Then there's extra value on top of that. Unfortunately, but, she's not one of the desperation. I mean, unless you run desperation Ishtar, but then you don't have no follow up, um, which is pretty important. Yeah. Um, that is the thing that does suck about weapons that are desperation built in, as opposed to brave. Well, I meant brave built in, as opposed to desperation. You can't desperation quad under any circumstance well, unless you use that thing slot thinking about her or the buff. The other speedy heroes and her practical potential on outspeeding by ten. Yeah, so that's the problem. She no longer has a brave effect if she does not outspeed them by ten, which means <laughs> if she only gets one shot off, she's in a lot of trouble. Because it's not instant special, it's actually the special on the second blow. Yep. And... Oh, it has some holes. You know it, there is another mage that is a brave weapon based on their speed. But unlike Ishtar, this one actually has desperation as a potential. If they can't brave. Winter Lysithea gets a brave effect if more than 10 speed. But if anything less, she just gets desperation instead. So who, who cares? I like different... Dishtar's art, and the, it's all out, by the way. Oh, thank you. So, Harmonic Lysithea obviously doesn't have no special, and obviously doesn't have no follow-up as a cavalry. But it's still probably Wait, better. Wait, wasn't there two Skullhawks? I know the one in FGO is literally a mother, right? Based on that mythology, but I thought there was another one. Yeah, it's like, yeah, there's like some sort of angel Skullhawk, and then like, I forgot what the other one is. Yeah, so that's what I was talking about. I know the one in FGO is... Like, if you listen to the, the lore, she's actually raised kids before. I don't know, it's weird. But, um... That's the other thing. There's multiple Skahawks, aren't there? Whatever. I feel like there are. Maybe not, but I feel like there are. 